you don't you don't wear one pair a day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wear them under my pants to work, but <laughs> that's great, Joel. You don't <laughs> Thanks, do Cuddy. that. that you one. don't wear jeans. You're the craziest cousin of us all, Joel. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm proud of it. <laughs> Nobody will ever know. It's gonna be the most awkward transition ever. <laughs> <laughs> Super loud laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Merry Christmas, everybody. We made it. It's the third episode of our Christmas specials, but this is it. This is the last one. This is the doozy. This is the big one. This is the one we all came for. You know, it's going to be like uh, Back to the Future. The third one is the worst one. Hey, you know what? Or it could be like Return of the King or uh, Last Crusade and be nope. just as also good as the, the first worst. One. Nope. Back to the Future. Also the worst one I see. So yes, uh, this is the last of our Christmas special, guys, and we don't really have a theme about this one. This one's just about Christmas in general. I was actually thinking about this the other day, because you know we did our Thanksgiving episode not too long ago, and we talked about how we would easily trade uh, Black Friday off for Christmas Eve off. We would easily make that trade for the day off of work. But it got me thinking. Objectively speaking, what makes Christmas great? If you take the religious aspect out of it and you make it a secular argument about what objectively makes Christmas great, what is it? Jesus. Jesus Christ. I said secular. <laughs> <laughs> I said secular. Jesus yes. uh, died for our Obviously, sins. if you take the religious stuff out of it and you just say from an objective standpoint, <laughs> like if a bunch of aliens came down from planet Xenu or somewhere, they how, how would we pitch Christmas as the best holiday for them? It was planet Zygoit, Dylan. Zygoit? Do your, do your research. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that like a... That's a... That's a thing in the body, right? <laughs> I don't remember what that is. I'm so I'm so you got, a, you got a broken zygoid. Do I? It's the tail end of a paramecium. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Jesus. Wow. But no, like if you had to make an argument for why Christmas is the best holiday, what would it be? Um objectively speaking, taking the religious aspect out. Uh Santa's beard. You couldn't, could you? I think that's the point I'm getting at here is that we probably really couldn't make the argument. Well, you can't uh, you can't say that uh, it's because like family gets together because that's every holiday. Exactly, that's exactly where I'm going. Uh, gifts because that happens on birthdays as well. Mm-hmm. So maybe Christmas isn't that great, guys. It's, is what I'm getting. <laughs> it's the music. <laughs> it's the chill in the air. It's the decorations. The decorations. All those lights glistening. I think it's a combination of all things. Dylan. Maybe, yeah. maybe it is a combination. It's, I'm a, it's like a pot what? of chili. It's a bowl of chili. Is that what you? Is that what you said? So I said it's like a pot of chili. You put everything together, and it's amazing. You take everything separate, and it's like I don't want this stupid onion. I don't want this dang packet of chili powder. <laughs> I want it all together. We actually you had, had a conversation Christmas. with about that at work about what constitutes as chili. One has become just the thing of beans, and it's just chili. Like, what's the difference? Like, oh. where's the line? Like, oh. when is it just like, this is a bowl of beans? No, this is chili. Does it actually have to be chili in it? Totally off topic, but. I think, yeah. No, because you, you could have chili know. without meat. You could have chili without, like, there's, yeah, I don't know. Man, that's a tough one. I'm I asking just, tough questions today, guys. I want to know answers to these You're things. on the ball today. I don't know. Beans and meat. I would, I would say you have to have some, I mean, I don't know anything about food, but, I mean, if chili is in the name, don't you have to have some type of chili something in it? That's what I has thought. Be, has to but be like spicy no, beans. I mean, there's no, there's, you can, there's nothing that's like official chili, like spices. There, there are uh, spices that traditionally go into chili. Right. But there's not like, there's not like a, 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 a packet of Lowry's that's like, <laughs> this was what makes it chili. It's like, no, you just like... And then that's the thing is, like, we, we couldn't come to a decision on this. It was, yeah, we really don't know when, like, say this is a bowl of chili. I'm like, well, it's just a bowl of beans. You know, like, what's what's the difference here? And I don't know. But I, I, I would imagine that there had to be some sort of spice in it somewhere outside of the normal stuff. I think if you add, I think if you add liquid to beans. <laughs> <laughs> any liquid any liquid brake fluid to beans <laughs> it turns into chili old brake fluid beans <laughs> aka chili any sort of viscous <laughs> fluid to beans jello and beans equals chili 
Merry Christmas to us all. <laughs> there you go, folks. That was I've your show. I've never made chili before. I don't even know how you make it. What? I've never made chili. You, never made you chili? put beans in a pot. You add a liquid. <laughs> you you, you go up, to you Wendy's. You talk day. in the window and ask for chili. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joel. anyway. So as far as Christmas goes, yeah, I don't. I I think Christmas is the best holiday, but I have a hard time making an objective argument. To me, what it all comes down to. Maybe you guys are right. Maybe it is the little things that make up christmas but i think the obvious one is the presents you said you can get that on your birthday as well so that's a good argument against that but presents are only like really great when you're a kid you get older you kind of are going like okay i'm gonna get a few things here and there and they're not that as special not receiving i think as you get older giving gifts become becomes more fun that's a load of crap that's a load of crap man that's because you're <laughs> yeah, get him, get him. <laughs> also true. <laughs> I think there should be a a, uh, a cutoff age like there is for trick or treating. For receiving, for, for, for receiving gifts, because I don't know. It's just but it's, it's just very difficult rewarding. to buy from people older because you don't know what's going to make them happy. Well, they send you a link to Amazon and you buy that item and it's like, oh, good, no, you got me the thing that I asked for. What it's all no because. The the fun the, look guys <laughs> no. come on you guys are all wrong. Uh, that's the lazy man's way of doing going about it, and I agree it's more efficient. <laughs> it is more efficient. But like, isn't the, that what you do? No, the fun. The, what do you do? The fun. I, look, I will if I cho- if I remember to do it, I might write down a list. For like, for like my wife, maybe. But do you ask her what it, she wants, or do you, over the course of the year, do you remember yeah, things that she says no, she I, wants? I make note oh, in okay. my mind. You do a lot of work. Well, as I think it should be. Happy wife, like, happy life. I don't think it's like <laughs> I bought you. Uh, I bought I bought you these socks. Merry <laughs> Christmas. You needed socks. Like no, it's something that they they not necessarily something that like. Even that they know they want. It's something that you know that they will like or appreciate. Yeah. And again, I, I agree that sometimes the, the the thought that goes into a gift is more important than the gift itself. And uh, I think it's just harder as you get older to find something of practical nature that you can actually open in a box and be like, oh, now I feel you know, loved or something. It's just extremely difficult to <laughs> capture that in an item that like you said you can purchase on Amazon to some extent. I'm still waiting for that moment <laughs> to open something and say, oh, now I feel loved. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like my life is complete. I've never felt that. <laughs> you never felt that as a kid? You didn't open a gift and feel like, man, my parents must really love me because there's no way every time I open the bag of Wendy's. <laughs> I look at my food. Whenever you see those fries and you see them that had fallen off into the bottom of the yeah. bag and you go, oh, I'm, like, oh, I'm love, baby. That was something our dad used to always do. And every time he'd get us Wendy's, he'd give us the fries. And as he would hand, he'd pull the fries out of the bag, he'd shake them so they'd fall out. And we'd always go, stop doing that. And he'd be like, oh, I don't know. They fell out of the bottom of the bag. And yeah. he'd always keep the bag. <laughs> you jerk. Mm-hmm. Those are the best ones that fall. Yeah. Uh-huh. He pull he pulls out the the fries package like upside down, it's just dumped completely into the bag. <laughs> hands you the empty Lots. package. Here you go. Here you go, you bastard. <laughs> They'd slap us. Terrible sons. <laughs> I, I'd rip his chest hair. <laughs> well, it's one way of doing it. it Go straight for the chest hair. <laughs> Bring up some personal turn for rip. Cody. Speaking of opening gifts, do you guys think that? It's customary to open a gift on Christmas Eve. One gift. Are you guys on that bandwagon? Uh, I'm all for it. I don't do it. It's <laughs> an interesting sentence. Why don't you do I, it? I understand. It's not part of my traditions, but I'm okay. All right. If you want to. You know, I I used to be for it, but I'm kind of leaning to not doing that. I don't really have an argument as to why. I feel as if... Like what, what what benefit is there to opening one gift on Christmas Eve? If you're a kid, it might be different. Maybe. No, I think it depends on I think it depends on your personality. Some people like they will shake their gifts and like try and guess what it is. Like for me, my pre- oh my god, that is the worst thing on the face of the planet. Like I don't even want to look at my presents because I don't want to try and even 
venture a guess. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be completely surprised. Because once you know, like, once you have an idea of, like, what it is, it's like, then you're not looking forward to it anymore. Exactly. You're you're just like, yeah, I I got it. Yeah, the, the, the excitement, part of the excitement is waiting for christmas morning it's like you open open your gifts have a good time that's why that's why i just open cody's gifts on christmas eve <laughs> i got you something special or, or do what josh did and open your gift on christmas eve and then wear your gift on christmas morning and not realize that you're oh and not realize gosh. that everybody else is not noticing that you had actually worn your gift <laughs> yeah that was one of the best pranks <laughs> oh that was amazing it was good times have you guys ever got anything you've been disappointed by uh, uh, that you guys have looked at and said, "This sucks." I don't know. You just you just have to have like no expectation, because if you have high expectations, that that's what leads to disappointment. But if you're not expecting I, we, anything, Luke, you're in the same boat. I think my our mom gets us a pair of like pajama pants every Christmas. Mm-hmm. It seems like, yeah. And I like every time I open it, it's like, oh okay and then i just have to like return it because i already have a thousand of the same ones from the year prior and it's not like i'm just like going through them like candy it's like no they last they last a while i'm okay (laughs) they're made of wool you don't you don't wear one pair a day (laughs) (laughs) well i wear them under my pants to work but (laughs) that's great joel you don't <laughs> Thanks, do Scotty. that. that you one. don't wear jeans. You're the craziest cousin of us all, Joel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I'm proud of it. <laughs> Nobody will ever know. It's going to be the most <laughs> awkward transition ever. <laughs> <laughs> Super loud laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Anyways, well, if you guys could change one thing about Christmas to make it less stressful, what would it be? Is it the buying of the gifts? Is it less decorating? Is it less pressure at work because everyone's trying to get year end of year stuff done? What do you think would make it less crazy? Because I know stress levels are like at an all time high. I mean, Honestly, cool I think I think going to any store during Christmas season is the most stressful part of Christmas. Yes, just because it is so packed and everybody is so just uh, linebackers all of a sudden just like knocking you out of the way trying to get whatever they want. And it's like, I came in here for batteries, and I'm trying to get at it. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the store for batteries. <laughs> Who needs batteries? Uh, yeah, present. I'd agree with that. Uh, I think I was kind of with you a little bit. I don't think there should be a limit on how much you should buy, but I think there should just be a cultural understanding that presents are not required. That's become all the thing we have to do now. I mean, there's a whole day right after Thanksgiving devoted to just buying stuff for this holiday. Yeah, but it either has to be all or nothing. You can't just have some people doing it and some people not doing it. Like, either everyone's going to do it or no one's going to do it. Well, I know we couldn't get everybody on board, but it, I, I wish it was the cultural norm to say you only get one or two gifts per person. I wish that was mostly accepted by society. But now it's, I got to have the craziest Christmas ever by they're just being a shower of gifts. And I'm like, listen, everybody, I think we've lost sight of what's important here. But with those two gifts, like how expensive are they? Cause it's thousands like, of dollars. It's like, a, it's like a competition. <laughs> yeah. Because I think the average person I was reading, it spends like 500 to thousand dollars a year on Christmas gifts. Well, that's cheap. $500,000. And like everyone's competing with other people to buy the nicest gift for their respective people. And it's just like a huge competition. And then people are just kind of outpaying the other person to look like, oh, I didn't get you the cheapest gift. I got you the most expensive one. I think the government should step in, regulate (laughs) it. And we're all held to a $20 limit. You know what? I, I think there should be a government shutdown on how many gifts are given. <laughs> oh, don't worry. <laughs> We're on our way, boys. We're on our way. It's like it's like Valentine's Day where they, you know, create this whole thing and they make you go out and buy stuff. I think like, it doesn't make any sense for me to buy something for someone like they sent me the link to. They buy me the thing I sent the link to. And I'm like, I could have just bought this thing myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Does it lose its, like, does it, well, not necessarily lose its value. What's the word I'm looking for? It Does it become less special? If you already know, well, there's no surprise. Here's the thing. 
I personally, I pride myself if I can buy a good solid gift mm-hmm. that is not on the person's list. That's that's the preferred option, but that's probably because you're a good husband, right? And you know, <laughs> exactly when you say solid, wife. do you mean dense? Dent, yeah, like a dense, like a dense heavy object. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot, like a lot of mass, like a Denny's object. That reminded me of that Back to the Future joke. He goes, "Man, this is heavy." He goes, "Wait, has nothing to do with it." <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think that there's an <laughs> next podcast. This it wasn't guy, that funny. Wait, no next podcast. This guy husband tips, husband tips. Yeah. I don't know any, <laughs> this husband tips. <laughs> How do you tip at restaurants? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think there's, there's all this pressure. In fact, I think it's my, uh, girlfriend's parents. They told me that they don't buy each other gifts for Christmas. They just said, we're not going to bother. It, we're we're gifts enough to each other. What's the like? What, what, it's not going to become this thing where you suddenly go, oh, now I feel as if make me puke. <laughs> <laughs> Got my cheese. <clears throat> look, that's admirable. I, 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 that's admirable. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I, look, it's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. They're it's wrong. incorrect. They're one hundred percent wrong. <laughs> no, I like. I don't know. <clears throat> It's, I think there's a gray area. Yeah, it's I mean, just you can, like everything you can, like, else. You can you can be black and white and say like, oh, these people are spending thousands of dollars and these people don't even buy gifts. Or you could be like most people and just be like, all right, I'm going to set myself a limit, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever it is, and just go with that. Yeah, I think that's that's actually what I did this year. I just set myself a budget and I said, this is how much I'm spending on gifts, and I just picked the people that I loved most. And say you're getting these gifts. You ranked your family. Oh, yeah, because there's like tiers. There's like tier one is like those are the people you're closest to that you see the most throughout the year that you buy the nicest gift for. And then there's the tier two people you get gifts gift card for. Mm-hmm. Gift cards for us. Well, I don't gift mind gift cards. I'm expecting a tier three gift. <laughs> tier three is Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. No, tier three is the Secret Santa people, the ones that you don't give two squats about. You're just like, I had I had to get a gift. Here's a candle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah here's something you just kind of go, yeah. You know what? There you go. You get me a Yankee candle, buddy. They are good. I will love you for the rest of my life. <laughs> I have one. That's like half the budget right there. <laughs> Suckers used. Well, <laughs> I think I know who we can blame for this whole gift debacle. It's Santa Claus. Obama. <laughs> oh. The next one. The other bearded guy. Santa Claus. The uh, obviously there's this whole thing about Santa. Where did Santa Claus come from? I know, Germany. Well, actually, no. I, I take it back. I know where Saint Nick Slavica. came from. <laughs> Yugoslavia. Slavica. Slavica. Not even a real country. Uh, it, yeah. So from what I remember, we did a whole skit on this where we actually had to look up the history of that, and it was somebody named Saint Nicholas from Myra. I think it was in the 14th century. And he used to go around giving gifts to everyone. So they built this whole folklore around him being, you know, old Saint Nick coming around. So I think that's where it stemmed from. But what's with this whole thing about actually telling kids there's a real Santa Claus coming around giving gifts? What what is the benefit of that? The 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 the, the magic of the season. They have to they have to give the illusion that someone is watching them throughout the year so they behave. It's partially yeah, it's, I forgot it's about not, that. It's really partially about, a like, lesson. Jolly yeah. guy giving gifts. It's about People, it's about, you know, if you're good enough, then you get rewarded. Yeah. Partially. But look. Partially. The, as a parent, it's the, the, for me at least, the vast majority of it is reliving those happy feelings that you felt as a kid through your kid. Mm -hmm. So you say like, oh my God, I remember when like you go to sleep, you're all, you're all excited and stuff. I get to watch my kid do that now. Mm-hmm. But I have to create that. You're having a Christmas vacation moment where you're having to recreate your entire childhood so that your kid can experience yeah. that same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only better. <laughs> That's a lot of lights on your house. <laughs> Luke, Luke, would you ever would you ever dress up like Santa Claus to surprise your daughter? No. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever I'm shave your beard to surprise your daughter? Uh, yeah, I would, but I don't think it would surprise her. She's just like, she would just be like, you are one ugly <laughs> SOB. Not your wife, your daughter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never mind that. Would you ever get a what skull tattoo on you your face to surprise me? A skull tattoo on my face. I thought you meant a skull <laughs> tattoo, but I would get it on my face. 
Yeah. I'm so confused. <laughs> Wait a minute. Skull looks like. Just get it on your face. Yeah, like my like a whole skull, a, skull. a Hulk skull on my face. <laughs> Hulk skull. Which what Hulk are we talking, talking about? about? Santa Claus. Hulk Hogan or Incredible Hulk, Hulk? Hulk Hogan's face on my face. <laughs> Hulk Hogan's face on the Incredible Hulk's face on your face. On my face. <laughs> Three faces. It would be a tattoo of Hulk Hogan <laughs> on the Hulk, all of that tattooed on my face. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Santa Claus. <laughs> Thanks, Santa Claus. How old were you guys when you guys found out there was no Santa Claus? How'd you guys take it? I was 24. I was, I was six months old. <laughs> <laughs> your dad just came in. By the way, I'm not going to bother with this. <laughs> I think I, I don't remember. I, I remember the day my dad told me, and he spanked me. <laughs> <laughs> that was every day. Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. No, I don't. I don't remember. Joel, you you might remember better. Than me. I don't remember. I, ever... I remember. Uh, I remember when I realized. It. Me, Joel. My, our parents never like confessed that there was no Santa Claus. It was. What are you guys laughing at? <laughs> you, I, nothing continue i farted uh yeah it was it was i realized so some parents will like write like you know like we'll put gifts under the tree and say it's from santa or whatever our parents never did that they just said oh yeah there's a santa but they never we never got presents from santa yeah i think i <laughs> it think it's always just from like our parents i think they tried to do that but it was like way too late Oh, like they, they tried to remember like, oh, yeah, this is Santa's like we're 25. Only a couple of years I ago. realized once I put two and two together, and I was like, wait a second. I don't think we ever got a gift from Santa before. Although, Therefore. although, and actually, I just had this discussion with somebody else. I, I, if I remember correctly, it was um, our tradition that mom would pretend that our um, stocking stuffers were from Santa. Yeah, but she was super lazy about it. She would do it literally. She, we would, we would go, we would go to our grandparents' house, open like gifts with the family and then come back to our house. And she would have this wait outside for like 10 minutes while she went in there to fill up <laughs> the stockings. Not suspicious at all. You know what though? <laughs> yeah. You know what though? I understand. Cause I'm, I'm going to be the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when, when are you going to tell your daughter there is no Santa? When is that going to happen? When's the day? I don't know. What's don't, the proper age? Uh, maybe like uh, sometime in elementary school. Hmm. Like hmm. Uh, late elementary school. Hmm. Maybe you, fourth grade? I mean, the concern there, you don't want to tell her too late because then you, she might be made fun of if she... Like, yeah, yeah you, you, have to, you have to feel it out. Basically, this is the indicator. When she comes home and she says, Mommy, Daddy, a friend said that Santa isn't real. Then, you, then you're like, all right. Now we got to have the talk. <laughs> all right, friend. So you wait for the other kids. Your, your friend is full of snot. Your, friend's <laughs> your friends full are full of snot. snot. So yeah, wait for the other kids. It's probably not a bad indicator. I, I feel like anything after six years old, it's, it's time. Just it's a ballpark guess. Because you're, you're in school. That's first grade. That's first grade. By the time you get to second, it's like, okay, come on. I'm like, let's uh, let's do this. But I'd also in- emphasize, listen, if somebody else says there's a Santa Claus, you don't tell them there's not one. That's their business. <laughs> you don't tell anybody what to believe. They can believe whatever they want. But I don't know if they're old enough to handle that type of responsibility. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> don't tell, don't do something, child. And yeah, what are the first thing they do? Well, okay, Jesus, please, now keep it to yourself. Hey, I forgot we were recording. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember being told there's no Santa Claus over there? How'd you take mm, it? You, no. know, you still haven't remember. gotten over it. I wonder, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember how old I was. I think I just figured it out on my own. But I wonder, like, who is the oldest person right now alive that actually believes in a physical Santa Claus? Because oh. the old people be like, I believe in the spirit of Santa Claus. Like, that doesn't count. Like, who actually believes in, like, a physical Santa Claus that's flying in the sky? Like, they thought the Santa Claus movie with Tim Allen was a documentary. Yeah, something like that. Like, they there's, actually still... Uh, there's a bunch of crazies out there. I'm sure, <laughs> oh, there's, yeah. there, I'm sure there's somebody who's going to die <laughs> thinking, believing fully that Santa Claus... Well, the people that do believe that, it, it's, it's something that I go, like, how, how did you make it this far in life? Like, how, how do you... I think that of a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how did you make it this far? 
I, I don't understand. Like, we, we can agree on basic things. Like, you need, to, you need to eat, you need to sleep, you probably need to be kind to people. But somewhere down the line, you didn't get the memo that this was just a story that we told people. Because, it, and we can literally trace back the history and say it started from right here. We know where it came from. And like, no, 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 it's a real thing. I'm like, where did you jump the shark? Where, where was the point where you're like, no, I'm sticking to my guns on this one? <laughs> like, where was that moment of your life where they gave up? <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess I guess we all got to call it quits someday, I guess. Uh, I think of- I think a better question is, what if Santa was real? Mm-hmm. Then How would that change how we just like view the world and how we act. Does he, does he have the same powers? He's got the same powers. He sees everybody. He's the person who like comes into your house every Christmas once a day or once a year, once a day is the, does your laundry. (laughs) (laughs) Bless that guy is. I think you would see a new religion sprout up. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) You'd see a couple. Uh, would the only punishment still be not getting presents on Christmas, or would he like beat me with a cr- <laughs> like, a crowbar? It'd be like Krampus, like much harder. He'd come and steal you from your bed. Yeah, <laughs> like shake me and waterboard me and <laughs> take you straight to hell. He waterboards you. He goes through this whole process of getting you on a board. Like, what's the maximum sentence for I being live bad? Santa. <laughs> well, uh, it's a lump of I coal is the tradition. Yeah, but like, if he's real, he might up the ante. <laughs> it's just a lump of crap. <laughs> he just Here's some deer dung. This is my reindeer dung. <laughs> Straight from Comet. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, if Santa Claus was real, I, I, well, let's just put it this way. Like, the world would be a lot more terrified. <laughs> they would probably be like, once a year, there's going to be a man that's going to literally break into your house through the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> what happens, like, again, if he has all the same powers, I wonder if he's able to stop the fire. And if you set a fire in your fireplace, is he going to literally just be able to stop it? I thought you meant the California wildfires. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we need Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> you see, like, the C-130 is, like, the Air National Guard is, like, dropping <laughs> retardant on the fires. And then all of a sudden, Santa, Santa Claus, Claus comes down. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Dumps this is all his bag need. of water. <laughs> I have endless amounts of water. <laughs> Who needs water? We need a magic. <laughs> when you need a magic, need a magic. Why does he talk like that? Magic Johnson. <laughs> when you need a magic Johnson, he dumps magic. You need Johnson. magic Johnson. Who needs water when you need to have magic? <laughs> Stupidest thing. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely be a game changer. What do you think, Joel? What would be your opinion of the world if Santa Claus was real? I don't know. It would be weird. It would be weird to know that like some dude is just watching me from the North Pole all the time. <laughs> well, you know, you just gotta make sure you're being nice. If you're naughty, boy. I'll tell you, nobody in Vegas would get presents. Nobody in Vegas. <laughs> not, not a person. If that was the rule. Depends on where the bar is. I mean, like the actual like threshold for like. <laughs> she meant, like the actual like. No. <laughs> what does the physical location of the bar have to do with anything in Vegas? What's the bar, Santa? <laughs> uh, well, well, speaking of real or fake, what's you guys' opinion on uh, fake Christmas trees? <laughs> oh God! I thought you were gonna say something else. <laughs> what? What did you think? I don't know. Say it. Fake. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a segue. I don't mind them, Dylan. Let's <laughs> clarify. We're talking about trees here. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> oh those trees. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's a segue. <laughs> By the way, how's your guys' sex life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god. god uh yeah because obviously i think we all <laughs> you can't stop now uh, he's Can't lost stop. It. he's lost uh. obviously we all prefer the real tree because there's the smell there's the authenticity of the whole thing i don't you don't like the smell of christmas tree i'm not saying i don't like the smell i'm saying i prefer a fake tree oh wow interesting right. i think you're in the minority on that one now here's the thing is that we've had a fake tree for like 15 odd years that doesn't mean that i prefer it it's just i agree that it's way more convenient look look uh, let me clarify if i could sit on my couch 
snap my fingers and a perfectly decorated real tree plops into my living room and it smells amazing and and all, all the all the things occur <laughs> what if that was your one magical power it's just you could only have christmas trees show up real christmas tree plops into the room that i'm worst located. member of the avengers <laughs> Hey, Thanos, here's your Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Got, got to do something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, look, it's to me. I don't know. It's it's too much of a hassle. It, oh, yeah, it is. You get sap all over your hands. It's just you, needles everywhere. I don't know. It it's is just, a process. It is definitely a process. And once you've had a fake tree, the only thing that's really missing is the smell. If the yeah. smell was there, I think they, you can buy pine cones and just shove them under the tree, I guess. But uh, it still is just like it's not the same. And I've had both. And I definitely like the real tree. It, it definitely brings a lot more of like, wow, we really invested in this holiday season a little bit. But I, I definitely agree. The fake tree is the most convenient thing, too, especially as an adult. It's one less thing you have oh, to do. Man, it's the best thing ever. But if you have a kid. You kind of want them to have that experience of going and getting a tree, right? Sure. So that'd be the one exception. But as they get older, you're like, we're not we'll, doing that anymore. Yeah, we'll probably do that when she's old enough to appreciate it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> dreading it. I'm dreading it. Look at the process. You got to go get like an actual saw. And yeah. Cut no, the thing I, down. Now I, I realize why, why my dad was so angry <laughs> <laughs> every time we'd go and... Look for a tree. You're, you're having a breakthrough right now. I realize yeah, why I my dad was so angry. Father, <laughs> <laughs> what do you it prefer? A, what do you prefer over there? Uh, well, I prefer the real one, but it's a lot more work. If you so, it's, it's work either way, and I hate doing either one. Mm -hmm. So, what about you, Joel? What's the vote on this? <clears throat> I mean, I definitely prefer a real tree, but I, I I get the points of a fake tree. But I think I agree with you, Dylan. I think having like the smell when you walk into the house and you smell that Christmas tree smell, that's like what reminds me of Christmas the most. I think like the smell of Christmas trees and you just don't get that with fake trees. I know they have the stupid sprays and aerosol crap, but that's just like garbage. Yes, <laughs> I absolutely agree. Absolutely. All right, guys. So I forget what we we're talking about. <laughs> I brought you here to do one thing. Oh, you I'm can't sorry. even do the one thing I asked of you. Can you like pay attention for once, please? <laughs> All right, no. So since it's Christmas, I want us to vote on what the best gift was as a kid. We all generally had the same Christmas around this time. But what was the one gift that you were like, that's the one? That's the one I remember the most. That's the that's the one. We talked about this in one of the previous episodes in just general in our childhood, but I'm talking about specifically a Christmas gift. And I want us to agree on which one was like, that's the one. I'll tell you right now, I'll beat you all. You're going to tell us and then beat us? <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the question you just asked. I'm going to beat you all. <laughs> Physically? I'll tell you. Then I'm gonna You beat. mentally. <laughs> Get to my mind. Joel spiritually, me emotionally. <laughs> no, why don't you go first? Uh, my vote is for the Nintendo 64. That was the best gift I ever got. And I think that's a contender for everybody here. Maybe. Mm. Maybe. Or at least, let's put it this way, not to make it so specific. A Nintendo system. Or a game system. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. It's a good pretty one. Good. That's, that's, my, pretty that's much, my vote. That's pretty much what everyone wants when they're a kid. Yeah. I but not that necessarily. Wins. That's a generational thing. Mm. Mine, maybe mine for was... Yeah. Uh, all born the same and time. I think I said this in a previous podcast, but mine was... Um, like a good set of roller blades. So. Yeah, that's a contender. Oh yeah, that's a contender right there. Or, or like just skates in general, or like yeah. a skateboard there, or something. There's, to nothing, skate on. there's nothing better than like putting on a fresh pair of roller blades or getting on like a brand new bike that's never been ridden. Yeah, some sort of form of uh, quick transportation as a kid. You can't drive, so you have to settle for the next best thing. Your skateboard or your mm -hmm. roller blades, whatever it is. Yes, yeah, those are, that's the good stuff. I got a car for Christmas. As a kid, not as a kid, but I got a car for Christmas. Yeah, it was in your the the Jeep, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's yeah. hard to beat. I mean, that's I, I don't like that. I guess that I wasn't a kid. Yeah, but that wouldn't. You can't beat that. Gift. I, I guess for the sake of uh, 
the kids, you know, because again, like that'd be great as an adult. I got that today. I'd be like, this beats anything <laughs> I've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> just in terms of the price tag that would definitely win i guess okay if you if okay with the child stipulation yeah probably yeah i'd probably go with like rollerblades or something rollerblades huh how about you cody what's the thing that stands out uh i got a really nice uh button down tie-dye shirt <laughs> button down tie-dye shirt. <laughs> <laughs> not, <laughs> not a regular uh tea you know not a regular a tea no nah, i'd probably say the game system oh <laughs> man we're split. Shocker. We're split. So the Viverts, they love their video games. We were indoor, all about the screens. The Danners were all about being outdoors, rolling around on them blades. And that's Here's why you one. have diabetes and we don't. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the news. <laughs> this is the news. <laughs> this is the news. <laughs> the new Southern podcast. <laughs> I thought you just went like, and that's your news. <laughs> I would have been better. <laughs> Got your blades <laughs> and your screens. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. but um, I mean, I know that I don't know if you guys ever got this, but there was like a customary thing that we. We got as as guys. I don't know if this pertains to to girls so much, but as young men, it was uh, pretty much traditional that we had to get some form of a, a weapon. A what? Condom. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Triple magnum condoms <laughs> for everyone here. Uh. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> some form of weapon, like either a. Uh, a BB gun or uh, even more classic, a pocket knife. Yeah. Like a Swiss Army knife. That's a customary thing to get. And that's like a special thing. That's a special gift from uh, like either from, I think we all got it from our grandpa. Yep. That was, that's a cool gift. And even though like they're not something you carry around too often, but when you did get to use it, you're like, man, I feel so, I feel so much like a man right now. Just in general, that was, a, that, that was definitely a rite, rite of passage uh, gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I to this day I know exactly where my Swiss Army knife is. From. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely. It's, I still it's have kind of. It's, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that, Dylan, when you said, you know, you feel like a man. Yet most of our knives probably just we used them to like open bags of chips. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <the thing. laughs> I yeah, I use mine to open Amazon boxes. <laughs> <laughs> feel sword. <laughs> cut right through that type of thing um yeah i think as far as you know favorite gifts go that there was a few i think you said it's probably the meaning behind them a little bit and you know i always there was a knife that uh, our grandpa gave me and i still have it to this day and yeah, again i haven't used it for virtually anything but it's just you know the symbolism behind it but i also got a bb gun one year and that was the coolest thing ever i, I love getting a little toy gun type of thing oh i love that you would did you actually get a real gun from Grandpa? <laughs> did, you, did he give it to you for Christmas? I know you bought guns, but... Uh, yeah, well, that wasn't a Christmas gift. <laughs> you stole it. <laughs> you stole it. Stole it. <laughs> Knocked him out. <laughs> Punched the guy in the face. Elbow to the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. True story. Okay. True story on that one. No. I have a BB gun. That's about it. Yeah, well, don't You're tell right. anyone. I have, one of those, uh, I have one of those assault rifles that... You just put table salt in it and kill spiders. <laughs> Those are fantastic. Yeah, well, you get to shoot the uh, the bugs with. Oh yeah, the best thing in the world. One of my neighbors had that, and he was showing me it. And I was like, "This is pretty funny." <laughs> oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Works great. You just shoot the fly. That, that's a Christmas gift. You know, if you guys want to give me something, give me the, the table salt. Yeah. What tier am I at, guys? I'll give you some table salt. <laughs> <laughs> just a regular package of table salt. Yep. Here you go. You want some more <laughs> salt? Cody's just gonna like blow dart table salt into your face. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, boy. <laughs> That's what I call you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're done with this episode. And thank you, everybody out there, for watching. There's a hair in my eye. <laughs> 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 we're never going to make it through this. <laughs> oh, anyway, I was man. distracted. This is going to be our last episode for about two weeks. We're not actually going to release an episode during Christmas week, guys, because it's, it's Christmas. Christmas. I mean, people. come on. It's the best. Exactly. I mean, we're all going to buy ourselves a ton of gifts. Yeah. We got things to do. So we're going to be gone for an extra week. But don't worry. We're going to come back with more and exciting stuff soon. I promise. There's a lot of things in the works here, guys. A lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline. But until then, dang dogs barking. 
Till then, you guys should subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on SoundCloud, iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, Instagram. But if not, well, I guess we'll just see you back here whenever you feel like coming back. But until then, have a good Christmas, have a happy Hanukkah, a good Kwanzaa, and what else did I forget? Good Friday. Have good a good Friday. Friday. That's in three, four months from now. But anyway, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Peace out, home slice.